Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Greens Farms Church. We're glad that you are here with us this morning. And a special welcome to our mission trippers returning from Texas. Can we give them a hand, you guys? Now, you may notice our numbers in the front are looking a little thin. These are the ones who survived the Texas heat. Not only that, but also made it out of Texas without catching COVID. So congratulations to you guys. Um, so not only are we excited to celebrate and hear some um, about what happened in the past week uh, with our mission trip group, uh, we are also saying farewell to Becky and Dave Stamba, who are behind me. So I'm um, glad that you're able to join us um, this morning for uh, a day full of um, not just one, but multiple types of celebration, and also just one that is bittersweet as we say goodbye to our dear friends um, who have been with us for, for a while. Um, but as we continue on in worship, I just want to draw your attention to a few announcements before we get started on the singing. Um, as always, turn to that very last page in your bulletin if you want to see what we are up to throughout the summer. Beach services are starting, and so it feels like summer is officially underway. Uh, we've also got a few other things of note one of which is that we have one of our pastoral residents beginning um, this week, Emma Ray Carroll, and then our um, other pastoral resident is beginning later in August. Um, so there's still a lot going on, even though I know we'll all be in and out of town throughout the summer. Um, but if you are curious at any point, you can always refer to our schedule. Without um, any further delay, I wanna invite everyone to rise in body or in spirit as you are able so that we can worship God in song. with one accord every praise every praise is to our God sing hallelujah to our God glory hallelujah is to our God every praise every praise is to our God God
Let's pray. Dear God, as we gather again this morning, we are grateful for so much. Thank you for a wonderful week in San Antonio. Thank you for teaching us what it meant this week to be a living sacrifice. The sacrifices made by our kids, college and adult leaders as they showed your love by giving up vacation, camps, family time, comfort, and in some cases their health to serve you and the least of these. Though we were thankful for the opportunity to work in the homes of so many in San Antonio and experience the joy that comes with service, we also grieve the lives lost in the tragedy there this past week. Those who hoped for a better life from another country and died senselessly and tragically at the hands of greed and apathy. May we remember each day to be your hands and feet, to show compassion to our neighbor and to serve you in all that we do. We pray now the words that Jesus taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are offering child care for children third grade and younger. So if you'd like to avail yourselves of that, you guys can head on to the back and go down to the uh, hallway that the office is on. And the, uh, yep, back where Reverend, Day, Reverend Jeff is uh, waving back there and someone will show you where to go. All right, so first let me have a show of hands. If you were on the mission trip, please raise your hand. All right, so lest you think that we only had 10 people that went, we actually had 33. So let me explain why there are so few people here. <clears throat> This was quite the experience. Our trip to San Antonio was eventful, to say the least. <laughs> you could say that we had a few lemons lobbed our way. You could say that. You know, here's, here's one way to look at that. Day one, JFK debacle and a two-hour check-in. Left us running for the gate, but we finally made it. You know, a minor issue with our van, which led to a late-night drive to the car rental place for a replacement, and then when we arrived at Blueprint, the AC wasn't working and the dorm was 91 degrees. That's day one. Day two, we had to use Dr. Judy's services, you know, for a minor illness, and the elevator for Harrison wasn't working for a while. That was day two. Day three, there was a need for Dr. Judy maybe a couple more times. I'm looking at you, Joey Kane. And then we found out that two of the Blueprint staff came down with COVID. And we had spent a good deal of time with them. We started testing our leaders, and this is when it starts to get interesting. Day four, we tested a group of our kids who were exposed, we emailed all the parents, and six kids decided that they needed to go home due to some reasons that COVID would obviously overcomplicate family gatherings that this weekend or you know things like that. At the end of that day, there was an enormous rainstorm that came through and San Antonio hasn't had rain in like forever. We lost power a few times briefly at Blueprint. That was day four. Day five, at 4 a.m., Craig Barney and I took six kids and Jen and Harrison to the Austin airport. Brian Winkler got locked out of the building at 4 a.m. and slept in his van in the parking lot. <laughs> Jen Putman seriously underpacked and dressed Harrison in one of her t-shirts. <laughs> and well, let, let's just say this. Um, somebody afterwards just asked Matthew Six and Randy, if Randy were here, what I walked in on in the backyard of their work site. That was that day as well. And on a serious note, our homeowners' homes were deeply affected by that rainstorm, one of which uh, had a ceiling collapse due to the amount of rain. That was day five. Day six, our last day there, 
One of our kids who went home, we found out tested positive. We had another Dr. Dr. Judy moment at 11 o'clock that night after everyone had gone to bed. And then we woke up at 3 a.m. to get to the airport. Almost every day last week, it was an average of 100 degrees, give or take a few degrees. Our hottest day was 108 on Wednesday. And did we mention that two of our groups were working on the roofs? <laughs> and as of this morning, we have a total of eight of our people who have tested positive for COVID. So we had some lemons. But we also had some awesome lemonade. Here's the lemonade. Lemonade like kids learning and seeing firsthand how to be the hands and feet of Christ. How to be living sacrifices and care for one another. How to build new friendships and to rebuild old ones. Incredible barbecue, open mic night with Wes, water parks, parachute games, late night talks, gaga ball, and Nine Square with the kids from Texas, learning how to say, hey, y'all. <laughs> then there were the superlative awards, making scrapbooks for our homeowners, having the love of a stray dog at a work site, and incredible conversations with homeowners, a night out at Riverwalk, the Alamo, Tex-Mex and ice cream and trips to In-N-Out Burger and Raising Cane's Chicken. We can't forget the encouragement shown to each other in the gratitude circle on the last night. And especially the moment we spent 20 minutes telling our graduating senior, Joey Kane, how much he has meant to each of us and watching him become overwhelmed with emotion. Or when Harrison shared with his parents that he learned there were kids in wheelchairs who didn't have money for occupational therapists like his family did. That's just the start of the lemonade. But there's more, more that you're going to hear right now. Our year's theme in youth group was rebuild. I've asked a few of uh, our people to share for just a moment. Joey Kane will share, our college leaders who will share six word memoirs of their experiences, and Wes Beeler who is our intern, he will share what it has been like to be a student in the program a college leader in the program, and then finally a youth intern in the program. So as you all continue to rebuild at GFC to keep this momentum going for the next year post COVID, listen to the importance of ICTHIS and these mission trips uh, that they've had with these kids. So I'm gonna invite Joey, all of our college leaders and Wes to come on up. Joey, you're gonna go first, you're gonna stand here. Wes, you can have a seat. All the college kids come on up and just gather around the mic over here. I still remember when I was an incoming freshman, Allison's message to the church about ICTHIS. And I just remember how much passion she spoke with about all the people and experiences. And I remember that being one of the reasons I went in the fall. And to be here now, doing what Allison was doing those four years ago to the people coming into ICTHIS is a truly special experience. There's been so many fun times in ICTHIS, whether it's been just a place every week to come and a safe space to talk and to be with people's company who you truly enjoy and who you're so close to after the mission trips. When I found out that I was the only senior going on the mission trip, to be honest, I was a little nervous. But I can say it was, it was a lot of fun because not only did I get to spend a lot of time with the people who I looked up to, all these years in ICTHIS and, and to finally not, not be a full leader, but you know, kind of be close to them in a, in a way I, I hadn't before, in a way where I just kind of looked at them and their leadership and now I'm kind of becoming one of them and that's, and that's really special. But as great as those people are, and they truly are, I can say that the future of ICTHIS is in really good hands. I spent a lot of time with the rising seniors who are going to be leading ICTHIS next year and they are a really fun crew who I know will make ICTHIS 
just as great as it was. And they'll have a tough job. I mean, without the mission trip, if this isn't, it, I mean, the mission trip is where you kind of form those experiences that really make the ICTHIS. So it was a tough two years with no mission trip, but I know that they'll be able to rebuild it to what, how I remember it. And I hope I can come back to Greens Farms Church and lead the mission trips and inspire people in the way that the people who led the mission trips this year and in years past had. And, the two, and these two years have been tough. And uh, Becky came only three years ago, really right at the start of COVID, and had a really tough time. But no one could have handled it better. Becky did a great job, even through all the hardships. Zoom ichthys, which I can say is not the best, not the best experience. And then, and then figuring it out, someone in the church, finding someone who was generous enough to give their front yard of a property they were working on every week for us to meet at ichthys and to keep that going. I would like to thank Greens Farms Church, but more importantly, thank the people of it who made ICTHIS as special as it was for me, whether they're adult leaders, college leaders, or kids just a, one grade above me who I've known since sixth grade through the Boy Scouts, and now I'm incredibly close to, especially after this last mission trip. So, I mean, that's kind of all I have. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all you guys for um, allowing this church to be so great and giving us the opportunity to deepen our faith and to want to come back when we're in college. And uh, I think everybody up here except for uh, Allison was not able to go on a mission trip due to COVID. So this is their opportunity to kind of give a six word memoir as to what their experience was like. Um, I guess I'll go first. These kids are amazing. Should have seen it. Okay. Um, <laughs> these kids will be great leaders. Service is impactful despite how small. Can we sing Lean on Me? <laughs> <laughs> After hardships, we made friends forever. Hello. Um, so you've heard a lot about this mission trip. It certainly was not uh, without its hardships. Uh, we had a lot of problems, as Becky said, with COVID and just with the weather and all that. But I think for me, uh, it all really came out on the last night because the mission trip is so much more than just like a service trip. It's so much more than taking an adventure with a bunch of friends to go work on some houses. And while it certainly is that, there is so much bonding and learning more about each other and about the group that happens on that trip. Uh, I remember my first mission trip, I was never super involved in like middle school youth group. I went to Sunday school every once in a while, but it wasn't like a weekly thing for me. So going on the mission trip, I was really nervous because I was like, well, there's these people who are like fringe friends who I don't really know, but I'm gonna spend a week with them, so here we go. And I got back, and I'm still friends with some of those people today. A lot of them, actually. Um, the mission trip is really this unbelievable week where you get to spend every waking and sleeping hour with the same people. And you learn together, and you work together, and you worship together. And it's just beautiful and unbelievable. And to come back and go to ICTHIS and spend more time with all these people and get to learn more about them and eat pizza and talk about your life and about God and go to amusement parks and do whatever. I got some of my best friends in life through ICTHIS and that all started with the mission trip. And I hope for some of these kids, they're gonna have the same experience. So go mission trips. <laughs> Thank you guys. So listen, we truly had a blast getting to know the homeowners and working on roofs and painting siding and generally having an all around great time even in the midst of the crazy circumstances. My personal lemonade, 
was having an incredible and very fun team to work with. So many, many thanks to our interns, Wes Bueller and Chandler O'Reardon. All of our college leaders, Danny Chu, Issa Lopez, Allison Lindsay Noble, Jack Lindsay Noble, and Matthew Six. <laughs> to all of the adults who were such an incredible help and just loves, I loved being with them. Craig Barney, Randy Christofferson, Dr. Judy Lewitschka, Jen Putman, Leela Shields, and Brian Winkler. This couldn't be done without you. To Jeff and the staff and all the congregants, thank you for your support, for your prayers all week. Parents, as always, thank you for entrusting your children with me. And to the kids, I hope this trip was as meaningful to you as it was to me. These last three years have brought us many lemons mixed with a lot of lemonade. We had a lot of ups and downs. As has already been mentioned, we've had in-person projects, service projects, but we've also had Zoom youth group, which I know tanked for most of the time. But we had youth group on the lawn, and then we had a brand new youth room. We had pancake breakfasts, but we had canceled mission trips. Meeting at Old Mill Pond versus glow-in-the-dark bowling in the brand new meeting house. I know that these COVID years have been a little nutty, but this mission trip and the bonding y'all had will start the momentum all over again. I'm so excited for what's in store for you and the future. Know that I leave here with much gratitude in my heart for all of you and the many, many relationships that were built. My prayer will continue as you move ahead. So thank you for everything. Hi, Jen. Hey, Becky. The bulletin says there's supposed to be some people singing up here. I know. I thought that maybe we shouldn't sing because we already had a Maundy Thursday massacre with the choir. And I didn't want to have a Stambaugh Sunday slaughter with the mission trip kids. So we are not going to be singing Reckless Love to you. We are just going to invite everybody to sing it together. Uh, but this was the song that the mission trip kids had chosen because it, it is so meaningful. And at some point, uh, when Claire and everybody finally gets all of the pictures and we can send them out, there is a beautiful picture of all of the kids with their arms around each other singing this song at camp. So I hope that that picture makes it out there. But we are now going to worship together Reckless Love. And you will find that you do not have the lyrics to this song in your bulletin because it was going to be presented to you by our mission trip participants. But, you know, we've sung this song so many times in this church. It is not just a favorite of our youth, but a favorite of our church for worship. So you may know the chorus, and please just feel free to jump in as you know the words. Yeah. 
I know it says that this is um, time for Becky and Dave to share a sermon, but we kind of figured that Becky would kind of share her piece in that ministry moment uh, with the youth group. So you just get to listen to me for the next couple of minutes. And what I want to do is just share a few of the takeaways that, uh, that I will take away from my time here at at Greens Farms Church, a little reflection, uh, a little time to review, a little show and tell um, as well. First and foremost, as you can see, uh, I'm a stole guy, All right? And some of you may know that the Tour de France started this week. So this is the bike stole. We also have a couple good Connecticut challenge stories coming up. So, so this stole is, um, is in honor of the Tour de France. And what we will do right now is a sort of a tour to Westport. Uh, I can remember almost eight years ago, after Becky, where did Becky go? There's, there she is, hey, Beck. Um, after Becky got the first job in Connecticut at a UCC church, um, I had a call with a guy named Jeff Ryder, who was looking for someone to teach Sunday morning Bible study. Six months later, uh, after I was teaching Bible study, eventually some space opened up here on the staff. And Greens Farms Church created the position of, at that time, what was known as the interim associate minister of faith formation. I'm not sure if you ever had one of those before, uh, but it was an honor to be the interim associate minister of faith formation. Um, in addition to doing Bible study, some of the things I did was uh, working with the GFC seniors and friends who after a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months of trying to decide if we should change that name, said, no, we like that name. GFC seniors and friends is great. We're going to keep it. We had some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful chat and chews and lunch and learns. We had a handful of excellent Christmas luncheons at Da Pietros. Fabulous, fabulous opportunities for fellowship and community. We did a couple uh, Bloom workshops with Betsy Cameron. Hands up if you remember attending a Bloom workshop over the last few years. We had a number of great guest speakers that came in and worked with us on so many great things. And the first item of show and tell I'd like to share with you is this walking stick. This walking stick is from the grounds of the Incarnation Center that I just picked up one year during an adventure day with the youth group. Took it home and threw some shellac on it, but forever, this will remind me of all of the great times we had at Incarnation Center. Confirmation retreats, adventure days, um, women's retreats that were there that were absolutely wonderful. This stick will remind me of a lot of those great times. There were some extracurriculars as well that I will remember. Raise your hand if you've ever ridden the Connecticut Challenge. A lot of folks that have ridden the Connecticut Challenge here. A great uh, opportunity to do some fundraising and something that was a part of the church before I got here. At least people were riding it, but eventually they all kind of coalesced into Team Sprockets and eventually we turned into Team GFC. Uh, some wonderful, wonderful memories. Some of you may know um, that when you ride a charity ride, you typically get a number. If you ever watch the Tour de France, you see that people get, get numbers. And if you could imagine the pro cycling tour or even um, on rides like this, probably the worst number you could get is 13, right? You would think that would be like the worst number that you could get. That is unless you know anything about end times prophecy, unless you know anything about the book of Revelation 
and a little something called the mark of the beast. Okay? So my very first Connecticut challenge as interim associate minister of Greens Farms Church, yep, it's true, I got the number 666. <laughs> and should any of you um, be aware that not every Bible translation uses the number 666. Some translations, some older manuscripts use the word 616, 616. Have no fear. A couple years later, on a charity ride in New Jersey, your interim minister, uh, associate minister of faith formation, Got the number, 616. <laughs> so maybe you're kind of glad to get rid of the guy who's got literally two marks of the beast. <laughs> Just saying. Cindy, Tony, Mike, Randy, Thad, Jonathan, Carlos, Stephanie, Peter, Yvonne. We had great times and there may be others. We had great, great times riding along in the Connecticut Challenge. Another great extracurricular activity that's very recent, pickleball. Pickleball, never think of me without thinking of pickleball. And never think of pickleball without Mr. Tom Lowry, okay, who stayed on me. Big round of applause for Tom Lowry. They call him Mr. Pickleball, the ambassador of Pickleball, the mayor of Westport Pickleball. I will never be able to thank Tom Lowry enough who stayed on me about trying to recruit me for Pickleball. Uh, Tom, thank you. You and the game have changed my life. So much so that as a going away present, the staff at Greens Farms Church got me this. <laughs> Greens Farms Church logo on one side, Connecticut Challenge team picture on the other side. How about that? Thank you, staff. <laughs> Tom, Jane, Judy, Yvonne, just a number of the folks that we have played uh, pickleball with. And if I can make a shameless plug for Tom Lowry, if he ever wants to put a pickleball court in the parking lot, he promises he will just use chalk. You don't have to paint it. The net is portable. I just want to make a little pitch for Tom Lowry's pickleball court in the back parking lot over here. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Obviously, one of the highlights um, was my ordination. Uh, in 2018, after over 20 years of ministry, the United Church of Christ finally became home for me, the denomination where I really wanted to put down those roots of ordination. And during that process, uh, Greens Farms Church um, was so instrumental uh, in making that happen. Becky already uh, has mentioned uh, COVID Church. We had four vi versions, if I can count them, of COVID Church. We had church on YouTube, right? We had church on Zoom. We had church on Zoom watching YouTube, right? We had Earth Place. And then finally in September, uh, we were back in this wonderful meeting house. It has indeed, as Becky said, been quite a journey. The scriptures I wanna look at very quickly today, I think speak not only to what Becky and I have been able to experience uh, as our time here, but also speaks to what we all do uh, together, not just Becky and I, but what we all do together. The work of Greens Farms Church, the work of any church for that matter, as pastors, as parishioners, as youth and children's ministry directors, as worship leaders, as musicians, as singers. We do the work of spreading the good news of planting seeds of the kingdom and 
they remind me of how we are all called to put our faith into action. Listen to these words from Mark chapter four. Jesus taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow some seed, scattering the seed widely. Some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered. The other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, and still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, even 100 times. When Jesus was alone with the 12, he told them that the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. And he goes on to explain that what the farmer sows is the word. And in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul also uses this metaphor of planting. When he writes, one of you says, I follow Paul. Another one says, I follow Apollos. But who is Apollos? And who is Paul? We are only people who serve. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. So the one who plants and the one who waters are not really important. It's God who makes things grow. God is the important one. The one who plants and the one who waters both have one purpose. For we are co-workers in God's service. And you are God's field. Now it appears that what Paul is saying is that he and Apollos, and he doesn't mean the Greek god Apollos, right? There's just some dude named Apollos. But it appears that what Paul is saying is that he and Apollos our co-workers in this scenario, and that the church in Corinth is God's field. But I kind of like what John Wesley said. John Wesley was the founder of the Methodists, and he had a saying that the world was his parish. Not just his church, but the world was his parish. The world was his field. I like that. And that makes all of us farmers. That makes all of us co-workers. God's co-workers, sowing, planting, watering, doing the work of sowing the word together. It's what the mission trip did in Texas. It's what outreach does as they partner with ministry organizations bringing hope and healing. It's what the deacons do. It's exactly what the deacons do as they support those who grieve and who are in need. And it's what each and every one of you do as you go about your lives, reaching out to your friends and your neighbors telling them not only about this place, the church on a hill that shines like a beacon with the light of God's love, the, might, the, the light of God's love that I might say is overwhelming and reckless, that unconditional love. That's what you do each and every day as you sow seeds and water seeds while God gives the growth. Now, I know it's, it was kind of funny to come in this morning and see that um, 
the front of the bulletin. I don't know if you've seen that yet. It actually says, Stamball Sunday, which is kind of interesting because we could also call it Tom Lowry Sunday because it's Tom Lowry's 94th birthday today. Big round of applause for Tom Lowry. There he is. And still playing pickleball, might I add. I don't know why they call it a game for old timers. It's also, I don't think she's here. Is Betsy Cameron here? She's not here. Also, Betsy Cameron's birthday today, too. So you could call it Cameron Sunday as well. And I know that um, one of the reasons it's called Stamball Sunday is because I have had the privilege of being here for eight years. And Becky has been here with us for three years. But officially, I'm not sure if you all know this, but as of today, Stamboss Sunday, Becky and I have been doing this kind of work together, officially today, for 23 years. Happy anniversary, boo-boo. Thank you, Becky, for a wonderful 23 years. I love you too, Bobo. And thank you, Greens Farms Church, for a wonderful eight years, almost eight years. It has been such a privilege, such a joy, such an honor uh, to be with you uh, through the lemonade and through the lemons. Uh, I will continue, and I, I say this truthfully and honestly, until the day they put me in the ground, I will continue to hold you uh, all in my prayers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, Dave, uh, I want to thank you for your comments. Becky, I want to thank you for your comments, too. And uh, somehow or other, I'm going to try and just uh, follow this up with just a quick couple of few words. Um, but first, I just can't help but say, um, where's Tom? Where's our birthday boy, Tom? There he is, Tom. I think we just now got the best endorsement for pickleball ever. Boy, 94 years and still going, so that's great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember, but for years on our GFC website, there was a photo right on the splash page, and it was of Dave. He was standing at the lectern. Uh, it's Easter morning. The sun was streaming in through the window there, and he is just standing there with his arms outstretched. Do you remember that photo? He is extending a warm welcome to those Easter worshipers. 
And it has been something that Dave Stambaugh has been doing ever since he first arrived on the scene back in 2015. A warm welcome. It's something that he did here in worship countless occasions as he began the order of worship. But it's something, too, that he did with the Sunday morning Bible study, the seniors group, the deacons, the praise band and staff, confirmation class, GFC cyclers, and yes, GFC pickleballers. And then four years later, Becky arrived on the scene and added her own special welcome to the mix with middle school youth group, ICTHUS, confirmation class, the women's group, and more. Who will ever forget Zoom Church and the famous four minutes opening act of the Stamball Welcome? It is thanks to Dave and Becky that we got to know Jane Steiger's clock. <laughs> Linda and David Pride's staircase. It was through them that we got to know the weather reports down in Florida, thanks to the Atkins, the Berries, the Felicianos, and up north and out west in Minnesota, the Parkhurst family. And don't forget those ever famous, infamous Dave Stanball one-liners like, good to see the Christians are in church today. <laughs> Friends, I suspect that, that warm welcome that we have been blessed with for so many years is part of what makes a day like this so hard. It's so hard because we are going to miss that warm welcome, something fierce. Taking nothing away of what Dave and Becky have done with preaching and teaching, we are going to miss that warm welcome. And the relationships, the friendships that we've developed over the years. Maya Angelou did get it right. People will forget what you did. They will forget what you said but they will never forget how you made them feel. And Dave and Becky, you have made us feel loved. Loved the way God makes us feel loved. And we love you for that and so much more. And so Dave and Becky, I wanna invite you now to come forward here. And I wanna invite all the friends, the, the members and friends of Greens Farm Church to please rise. And inside your bulletin, you will find the litany prayer of farewell. And together, I'm gonna to invite you to respond by saying those portions of the prayer that are written in bold. Will you pray with me? Sisters and brothers in Christ, join me in praying in the, for the presence of our living Lord. In this world, he is risen. in this church, he is risen. in this community, he is risen. in this parish, he is risen. in the hearts of faithful people, he is risen. and join me in praying and giving thanks now for Becky Stambaugh and the Reverend Dave Stambaugh who are leaving our community. For expectations not met. Lord have mercy. For wounds not healed. Lord have mercy. For anger not dissolved. Lord have mercy. For promises not kept. Lord have mercy. And also for this portion of your lifelong pilgrimage which you have made with this people in this place. Thanks be to God. For friendships made, celebrations enjoyed, and for moments of nurture. Thanks be to God. For wounds healed, expectations met, gifts given, promises kept. Thanks be to God. 
for bread and wine, body and blood. Thanks be to God. For all the thoughtful little kindnesses done to make the day better for someone. Thanks be to God. And also to establish a home in another place with other members of the family of Christ. To continue the journey with new friends and new adventures, new gifts to give and to receive. Go in peace. To offer wisdom and experience, competence and compassion in the vocation to which you are called. Go in peace. With whatever fears, whatever sadness, whatever excitement may be yours. Go in peace. With our faith in you. our hope in you and our love for you. May the Lord watch between us while we are absent from one another in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. You can pray. <laughs> And I want to call upon my friend Thad Eidman to come forward at this time. Are we good? On? Great. Uh, so as Dave mentioned, his first activity here was Bible study. And many of the folks in this room have actually attended one of Dave's Bible studies. Raise your hand if you've been in one of Dave's Bible studies. Dave, take a look at the hands that are raised. Plus, hang on a sec. There's another 18 hands raised online. I just, just got that from right here. Uh, but, um, you know, I was, I was one of the folks who was fortunate to make it reasonably frequently. Um, do you know how many people were fairly regular in your Bible studies over the years? 58. 58. So we decided to do a little something special for you. Uh, you may recall you and I had a conversation at Earth Place service a few weeks ago. By the end of that conversation, I knew your favorite bike store, the make of the bike you wanted, the model of the bike you wanted, the frame size that you wanted, so it was quite a productive conversation. <laughs> However, as usual, I fell short. The bike comes in different colors. <laughs> so, Dave, on behalf of the Bible study group, and I will say that the participation was amazing out of the 58 folks. In fact, had you looked at the website under fundraising, you would have seen Project Wheels, right on our website. Uh, Claire, thank you very much for managing that. There's a check for you. Uh, see Claire, she'll take care of it. But there's enough for your bike and leftover to help you fix up your new office. We're so delighted to send you on your way, especially since you're wearing your new bike. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> One of the persons that was supposed to be here this morning was Brian Winkler, our, our, our moderator. And uh, Brian was going to say a couple of nice words on behalf of uh, Dave, on, behi on behalf of the church about Dave and Becky. And unfortunately, uh, he just felt that uh, with everything that was going on, it was probably a better, smarter for him to stay at home today. And I, we certainly uh, wish the whole Winkler family well here. Uh, but we want to uh, also let you know that in addition to those wonderful, nice things that Brian was going to say, he was also going to uh, make it possible for uh, the Stambaugh, to add to the Stambaugh Stole Collection. We want to, as uh, Dave mentioned earlier, he's wearing one that uh, sports some cycles. Uh, Dave is our most fashion-forward minister, and... Uh, we, 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 a little bit like the problem that Thad ran into about the color of the bike, we ran into a problem. It's great to give Dave a stole, but what stole will we give Dave? And we also knew 
they would have an opinion about what kind of stole you should get. But um, so that you're, you're, you're not uh, uh, just all left by yourself, Jen Potman was very kind to uh, kind of come up with uh, some samples here that she thought looked really super. And uh, you could begin to kind of think about maybe that would help inspire some thought about those. Um, I did note the cycles. Um, Jeff Putman, what do you think? Maybe one that sports some golfers. What do you think? I don't know. I don't, you know, you got the, the open is coming up, Dave. I don't know. We, we want equal representation here. So, so anyway, but we hope that uh, it will be something that along with a pickleball uh, mallet will be able to uh, remind you about your time here at Greens Farms Church. Um, so we thank you. We thank you for everything and for our time together. So one more round of applause, please, for Dave and for Becky. And now let me invite us all to stand as we sing our closing hymn that's printed in your bulletin. And you may be seated. We had uh, one small oversight, which really wasn't a small oversight. We had a little thank you for Becky, too. And we just wanted to make sure we gave it to you, Becky. We love you so much. And we are going to miss you terribly, terribly. So on behalf of everybody, <laughs> thank you, Becky, for all you've done. We're really going to miss you. Jen Sisko uh, asked me earlier this week if I had any requests for the closing hymn. Thank you, Jen. Uh, and I chose that one for two reasons. Because if you read the words, you would see how perfect those words went with the text that we looked at today. And also because it was one of the hymns that we sang at my ordination service. So I will use some of those 
uh, words as part of the benediction as well this morning. Because as we just sang, all of us are partners and co-workers with God. Called to ministries of grace blending our skills together as we surround sorrow with calm, offering words of comfort and vision as messengers of faith, giving hope and confidence and peace. And so go now in that peace, remembering that life is short and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Amen. Take care. God bless and happy sowing. Amen. Why don't we stand together and sing?